code tutorial for NoCage Q. And today, today's tutorial is going to be a big one because we added a brand new and highly requested feature to our Google Chrome extension integration for Bubble. If you don't know about it already, um, we basically offer an integration where you can build Google Chrome extension without code just using a Bubble application. You can get more information at chrome.nocohq.com, uh, get your build, um, buy the plugin, and you're good to go. So please watch our other tutorials if you're um, new to this. But what we added today um, is a big feature which basically allows you to build all kinds of Chrome extensions in the future. What this is, it allows you to inject custom JavaScript scripts into the current page, the current active tab of the user. This will obviously mean that you will need to um, write some code yourself, but the great thing is you just have to write the actual script um, that you want to insert into the page, and that's just in JavaScript. And usually um, many things can be done really easily. And if our other extension actions that we have included with the Chrome extension plugin don't offer something um, that you want to do uh, with your Chrome extension, then the custom script ac action will definitely allow you to do that by just adding your own script. So let's just see how that looks in practice. Okay, so as always, we have our bubble Chrome extension page here. I just called that F. Uh, we have our plugin dragged onto the page here, Chrome extension, and we can build our Chrome extension as always in Bubble. We're not going to focus on the UI here too much because that doesn't really matter in this case. Let's just make the background maybe, I don't know, grayish, okay? I'm just going to simply add a button to the, uh, to the center of my Chrome extension, and I'm just going to uh, change the text to um, inject script. Okay, so let's start at our workflow, so let's click that. Let's go to Element Actions, and you see already our Chrome extension, the, all the actions you have access to, and the new action we added, Custom Script. Okay, so if we click that, this is a simple action. If you look at it, it just has a code field, which means this is the code, or the, and to be more precise, the JavaScript code you want to inject into the current page HTML. Okay, now obviously the question is, what can I do with that? Well, almost everything. Um, depends on what you want to do. So I'll give you a few examples. You can add event listeners. You can add HTML, remove HTML. You can embed things in the current page. You can change the style, so modify all kinds of CSS. We're going to show you three examples from very simple to a bit more complex, but obviously um, there are so many things you can do, we wouldn't be able to show you everything in a video and not even in 10 videos. So. Let's start off the simplest example of them all. We just want to uh, uh, log something to the console. So what's the code for that? Well, just console.log, okay? And then add whatever you want to log to the console here. And obviously, you can always use dynamic data, okay? But we're going to use something static. We're just going to say, hello world, okay? And now, I just have the software page of Wikipedia here open. I'm just going to right-click, inspect, and take a look at the console, okay? It's empty. So now if we open our Chrome extension, okay, this will load a bit because it's quite full with plugins for testing purposes. So once this is loaded, we should see the button. Let's wait a second. All right, so it, the button says inject script. So let's take a look at it, let's press that. Perfect, you can see hello world is instantly logged to the console, no issues at all. I can print it several times or log it several times. Um, and yeah, quite simple. Uh, probably no real-world application, but just the easiest example to demonstrate. Let's take a look at something a bit more complex. So let's say with the software page here in Wikipedia, say for whatever reason, you always want to change the title here, this heading, the Wikipedia article name, you want to change the color of that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to right-click on that, find out the element ID, in this case quite simple, it's just first heading, okay, we can copy that or just remember that. Go back here and let's actually add the code. So the code in this case would be uh, document dot get element by ID. Okay. Then obviously the ID we want to target, which in this case is first heading. We want to change its style. We want to change the color, and we want to change it to. And now whatever you want to do, I'm just going to enter blue. You could enter any kind of color you want. Okay. And that's basically it, okay? So let's try that out. So let's open our Chrome extension again. And let's inject the script, see what happens. Take a look at this text here. Great. 
immediately change to um, to blue. Um, the title is now blue. Um, again, maybe not, um, maybe no real life uh, application of that or use case for that. I don't know to be honest, but just showing you any kind of script is possible. You can interact with the DOM as much as you want. Let's take a look at one last example, which isn't complex. It's maybe a bit more complex than the last two examples, but still um, quite simple. What I want to do, I want to add event listener. Um, I want to do something when something happens. Okay. Um, and obviously there's a lot of use cases for that. We're just going to have a really, really simple use case. We want to say when this content box here is pressed, we want to show an alert saying this is the content box of Wikipedia. Why you would want to do that? Uh, I don't know in this case, but uh, believe me, there's a lot of use cases for event listeners. But let's just try to recreate the functionality I just described. So I'm going to go back here now. Actually, first of all, we have to check the ID of this content box. So let's right click, inspect, and let's see. Yep. Okay. So the ID of this whole block is TOC, which is okay, which that means if so, a user clicks here on the right side, it will also show the alert. But let's just go with that. Okay. So that's Keep in mind TOC, or you can copy that once again. Let's go back to our bubble application and let's enter the code here. So this will be a bit more, um, a bit longer. So let's remove this part. We don't need that. Let's change the ID to TOC. Okay. And this time what we want to do, we want to do add event listener. Okay. The event listener we want to add is on click. Okay comma, and then we want to have a function that runs, and this function will simply show an alert, and this alert will say, uh, you have clicked the content box of Wikipedia, okay? I guess the code should be correct. Um, Okay, guys, I just went back here and just uh, cleaned up the code a bit so it's a bit more uh, easier to read. So let's just summarize again. I'm targeting my TOC. I'm adding an event listener that when this is clicked, I want to show this alert which says you have clicked the content box of Wikipedia. So let's try that out. So I'm going to just open my Chrome extension once again. And be aware that now when I click on inject script, nothing will happen immediately because we're just adding an event listener, which will then trigger something once this event takes place. So let's click on inject script. Nothing happens. Okay. So now let's click on uh, our content box. Let's see what happens. Great. You have clicked the content box of Wikipedia. Works perfectly fine. Um, and we injected a script, which basically uh, took a look at or takes a look at the current page and waits for you to or the, for the user to click on this box which will then trigger whatever we define in the function in this case this was clicking the um, the current uh, or, cl or clicking or showing the alert in this case so yeah um, again a quite um, straightforward solution but once again showcasing that all kinds of JavaScript injections are possible um, allowing you to basically um, create, I would say, almost all Chrome extensions that would be usually built uh, using custom code. So quite a, quite a great um, yeah, feature. And um, yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, feel free to comment uh, and or uh, reach to, out to us via email. And I'm going to see you guys for the next tutorial of NoCageCube. Bye.